I welcome you all for a session on file processing in C. File processing in C needs an understanding about the various data hierarchy we have in C programming as how data gets organized across C programming. Then we will have an understanding about what files are and what streams are. We will then move on towards creating two different kinds of files what we call as sequential access files and random access files. In both these files we will be interested in creating, reading, updating these two different varieties of files. Now moving on towards the brief introduction about files. What are the, what is the need for a file and what are we actually going to do with a file? These data files can be created, updated and processed by C programs. Files are used for permanent storage of large amount of data. Imagine whatever you store in variables and arrays are all very tiny and they are temporary. On the other hand, if you want to store large amounts of data and for a permanent basis, you need to go for files. That is why we move into this particular section and we have a brief discussion. Fine. You said we are going to organize data. Then what is the data hierarchy that gets followed in C programming? It starts from bits. What is a bit? The bit is the smallest data item that you can store in a C program. What values can it hold? It either holds 0 or it holds 1. So that forms the lowest level of your hierarchy. What sits on top of it? It is termed to be a byte which is 8 bits in length. It is used to store something like a character. It can also be used to store decimal digits, letters and special symbols what we call as the alphabets of C programming. A byte can hold all these things. What after bytes? Fields are a group of characters that convey some specific meaning and these are above bytes. So it started with bits, it moved on towards bytes and now we are at the fields. What can be an example of a field? Say for example, your name can be an example of a field. Then we have records. What are records? Records are group of related fields. What do they represent then? It represents a structure or a class. For example, a payroll system consists of a number of records for a, the number of employees that are there in a particular concern and it contains his or her identification number, name and address. The next stage happens to be files. What are files? A group of related records happen to be called as files. Can I have an example for a file? Yes, a payroll file can be an entire example for files. And there is a stage above files what we call as databases and as you all know a database is a group of related files. I repeat again the hierarchy starting from the least towards the highest. Number one, we do have bits, we have bytes, we have fields, we have records, we have what you call as files, you have a database. Now we are interested in understanding what a file is and how it gets organized. Think about this, I have only one single value which is 1, it is termed to be a bit. Then this bit can be a part of my byte where my byte value reads as 01001010. These 8 bits together will constitute me a byte. Then I say that this refers towards a person called Judy where it happens to be a particular field. Fields together can get us records. These records together can get us files and these files can be stored inside databases. We need to know something about a record key. What is a record key? It identifies a record to facilitate the retrieval of specific records from a particular file. What is a sequential file? It records typically these are a sequential file are records that are typically sorted 
by a particular key then we do have something as files and streams what are files and what are streams c programming views each file as a sequence of bytes then how does it distinguish between different files or how does it reckon the different things that are present in a file a file always ends up with a end of file marker or a file ends at a particular specified byte then what are streams when are they created streams are created when a file gets opened whenever a file gets opened a stream is also created then why should i have a stream it provides a communication channel between files and programs because it is often programs that make use of files so that should be a bridge that bridges a gap between programs and files so that bridge happens to be your stream opening a file returns a pointer to a file structure and example of these file pointers are std in std out and std err where standard input is received from your keyboard standard output is your console or your screen then the errors get prompted on your screen by what we do call as std err as a pointer towards determining your errors then moving on towards a file structure that is we have made use of a file pointer which has been opened at the time of opening your file what does it do a file descriptor it has an index into operating system array called the open file table i repeat again the file descriptor is something which is an index into the operating system array called the open file table then i have something called as a file control block it is found in every array element then the system uses it to administer the file which has been made in use then what are the various functions that i have within files i have read and write functions in the standard library as like get c and put c what we made use for characters for files we have it as f get c which reads one character from a file it takes a file pointer as an argument then i can simply say f get c sdin which means that i am going to get a character from the screen it is equivalent to get char then i have another function called as f put c which writes one character towards a file that is it takes a file pointer and a character to write as an argument f put c takes in a character that is say for example a character a and it takes a file pointer called std out which is equivalent to put char a because we have said that std out always means a pointer towards your target screen then i can also have f get s which reads a line from a file i can also have f put s which writes a line towards a file after all these functions i do have f printf and f scanf which we do all know are used for file processing equivalents of scanf and printf okay i have all these pointers where am i going to make use of all these i would create two different kinds of files as i said earlier the two different varieties of files are going to be sequential access files and random access files how do i create a sequential access file please mind c never imposes a particular file structure it has no notion of records in a particular file programmer must provide his own file structure so the creation of the file is solely dependent on the user or the programmer how do you create a file i create a file by making use of the keyword file which is all in caps followed by a pointer towards this file this creates a file operator and then making use of this operator i would go out and say that i am going to have a function called f open which takes in as parameters the target file that is to be opened along with an open mode the function f open returns a file pointer towards the file specified it takes two arguments one the file to open and then 
द फाइल टू बी ओपन इन विच मोड इफ द फाइल इज नॉट ओपन अ नल वैल्यू विल बी रिटर्न इन एडिशन टू दैट वी हैव एफ प्रिंट ऑफ विच इज लाइक प्रिंट ऑफ एक्सेप्ट द फर्स्ट आर्ग्यूमेंट इज अ फाइल पॉइंट ऑफ दैट इज द फाइल रिसीविंग डेटा then i would also have f u o f that is a file pointer it returns true if end of file indicator is set for a particular specified file then in addition to all these i do have another pointer called f close it is a file pointer that closes the specified file it is performed automatically when a program ends if a programmer doesn't explicitly declare this this gets performed automatically whenever the program ends because we might have opened a program we may have, we may have opened a file within our program and we could have forgot to close it so this f close is performed automatically when a program ends it is a good practice to close the files that we have opened and it's a good programming practice that we always close the files that we have more made use explicitly then there are a few details that follow creation of sequential files what are they programs may process no files one file or it may process many files each file must have an unique name and will have a different pointer make sure not a single pointer points to two different files or two pointers point to a same file all the file processing must refer to the file using only a pointer then what are the different modes in which a file can be opened a file can be opened in a mode r which stands for reading mode it can be opened in a w mode which means that we are creating a file for a writing purpose if the file already exists discard the current contents i can also open the file in a mode called a which is for an append an append can open or create a file for writing at the end of the file please mind append always tries to add the new content only at the end of your file r plus can open a file for update it may be an update while reading or writing w plus creates a file for update if the file already exists it discards the current content a plus is another append operation you open or create a file for update writing is done only at the end of the file so these are the various other modes in which a file can be opened 